Hello and welcome back to our third lecture in our series regarding uh, libraries. And um, we are together here with, um, for the first time again, also with some people who could join us from outside. So very welcome. And we are also um, streaming to Berlin, to the Berlin office. So uh, I'm glad that we're all together to welcome back to AAC uh, Chris van Dun who um, was here before in 2015 when we had the workshop for the um, uh, Evolutioneum. And um, I'm glad that uh, you told me earlier that you were looking forward to coming back. So of, that obviously is also a compliment to us. Chris van Dun is a partner at OMA and uh, responsible also for the Asia projects. He is involved or was involved in CCTV and but also in the Prada shops in New York and some of the libraries. And today he will talk about the uh, library projects, but also um, uh, currently in China. And Nico, I think you wanted to say something about this. Yeah, after thanks seeing you again. So normally GMP and OMA always are more competitors than <laughs> friends, but Chris and uh, Chris will introduce a project which is done by GMP and OMA in Chengdu. Uh, it's a huge town planning project which is now going to be realized and we will do the railway station including the surrounding area and he will more be in charge with uh, uh, institutes and Edu education uh, education parts, yes. and it's a wonderful cooperation with uh, Omar and Chris who's responsible so it's the poem you you always meet many times in your career and it's really a pleasure and we also cooperated once in Saudi Arabia with the project which we I don't know I at least we didn't win but it was a very good and professional cooperation so I'm also very glad that you came back. And yes, it's now yours. Good, thank you. Um, thanks for the uh, invite, first of all. Um, yeah, it's uh, uh, kind of uh, good to see real faces in the audience instead of looking at uh, screens and cameras only. So this is my first, let's say, uh, lecture in a year and a half. Uh, physical, uh, hopefully with uh, also a bit more energy than when sitting just behind the screen. So I'm very happy to be here. Indeed, five years ago, six years ago, it was very nice uh, to say to receive another invitation. The subject is libraries and uh, that was given, so I couldn't choose. Uh, but uh, we happen to have some libraries in our portfolio. Uh, I had to invent a title before my holidays without having a clue what I would do. So we called it a genealogy uh, as I will stick to that basically. Um, and I think actually it's good. I know a little bit what you, your project is about. I hope there is, let's say, some overlap in the interests. Um, if not, you have to simply sit and listen. Um, Okay, a genealogy, uh, I do this chronologically. Uh, that means I will present the OMA projects, uh, library projects uh, that are important in our office. Um, I'm, uh, I've been in the office quite a few years, but actually the first two projects I, I wasn't participating in in any way. So for me, it was also interesting to kind of basically look back a little bit and uh, yeah, put them in a sequence and see actually how maybe we are directly or indirectly, uh, let's say, uh, uh, influenced by other designs. Um, so the, 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 let's say, I will start with the two first projects, probably you know them all, but uh, the unbuilt projects in Paris, uh, then to the, the next ones. And the nice thing is this, that they basically present all a decade. It's one from the 80s, from the 90s, from the zeros, and then from the, the tens. Uh, and at last, we will show then kind of the new project that is kind of uh, in design. Um, so let, let's start with the beginning. Um, the uh, TGB was a competition, it was one of the Grand Projects uh, that Mitterrand at the time, the president, uh, had been initiating in Paris. 
Um, and it was his idea to collect five different libraries in Paris together into a single uh, project. Um, I looked back into some of the old documents from the archive and actually found whole discussions about is it still you is it does it still make sense at all to make libraries because in the future uh, books will not be necessary. So that subject is already 30 something years old. Um, and I guess you're still discussing about the same. What is the relevance of books and why should we make a library or what should the Institute of a Library really represent? So I can only say there's still books. So the relevance of libraries apparently still exists. Um, so maybe that's the proof in, in the pudding. Um, the TGB was never built, but has been very influential uh, design in the time that OMA was more an academic uh, office than anything else. I don't think uh, much was built at the time. Um, as I said, it's, uh, it's a competition of about five libraries and the original brief was requesting five independent buildings, each with their own symbolic features to be built uh, next to each other along the Seine. Um, this is one of the sketches that, uh, that is kind of well known. And this sketch was basically, basically summarizing the, the whole concept. Um, because that whole idea about uh, creating five symbols for five different libraries uh, was basically rejected. And instead, they were kind of put together in some kind of anti-symbol. Um, and the program was distributed into two parts, into, let's say, need for flexibility and needs for, need for symbolism. And those two words, flexibility and symbolism, are still important words in the uh, libraries that we designed uh, afterwards. So this is the section, and as you can see, there's floors, regular uh, uniform floors that are considered flexible. They can be used for bookshelves, they can be used for offices, they can be used for all the other amenities that the library needs and carved out from it, so not built, but basically not built, are then several voids and each void represent one of the five libraries. It was a media tech uh, at the time um, and each of them has a kind of a special relation to its program, to its orientation and to the uh, publicness of the uh, libraries. So this is a very important section. Um, the plan looked almost similar as the section. So we have a very orthogonal grid and in there, on there, you can project these different free shapes, each uh, representing one of the libraries. Um, that's, uh, let's say the rigidity of the uh, uh, generic floors then also allowed for a certain freedom for these symbolic spaces. And these were the experiments uh, in, 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 I think at the time, pretty new uh, three-dimensional software. Um, and this is actually one of the uh, uh, images that represent the project best. These are the two, this is one project, but these are the two representations. The symbolism of the public spaces the kind of different objects, each representing the uh, five libraries, and then the anti-monuments, the kind of compact, uh, basically shelf system uh, that 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 is carrying uh, the uh, these floating objects. Um, that was one project. We didn't win. Uh, uh, Perrault built his 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 building instead. Um, and only a few years later, in the beginning of the 90s, there was another library uh, project in Paris. Again, Paris, um, again, a cube. Um, but that's basically the only thing that, let's say, that is the same, because it's pretty much the opposite of the TGB. But also, this is an archetypical, let's say, architectural uh, prototype for a library. Um, the uh, library was an extension uh, to the uh, Yushe uh, University. It's a technical university and it was a, uh, a building I think designed in the 60s or early 70s. It's, it's a network and it is very flexible, very neutral, um, but very repetitive, monotonous and really lacking uh, a lot of creative moments. Um, 
However, there is the one level, which is called the parvis, which is the kind of cutout level, which is used for circulation and for access. And that should have been the boulevard of the uh, university. However, due to the lack of uh, compactness and intensity uh, and windiness and everything else, that never was never successful. So in our design, uh, that idea of this parvis was, was kind of continued and was basically extended to the library. And instead of being a long strip, it was simply kind of put together and uh, created a three-dimensional landscape. Um, that had nothing to do with the symbolism and the flexibility that the TGB has. This was a library as a social space. The social space, the social heart that was missing in the uh, UCA campus. Um, probably you've seen this, the whole idea was, was about folding floor planes up and creating this, 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 this uh, uh, yeah, stack of uh, continuous routes uh, where people could, from the Pavi, go all the way up uh, and which created this landscape. And then all the program was basically placed in it like buildings on the street. So in a way opposite of TGB, where it was carved out from a mass, here the program was put as a mass in this fluid, fluid landscape. And that, that, that resulted in the moments like this. So it would, people could yeah, walk around the boulevard as if they had sim simply were looking for inspiration, uh, serendipity, just see whatever you end up with, meet people uh, in a way. So that, that's kind of the social component uh, of, of the library that the library uh, also have. Um, so I showed these two projects and, and in the later projects you will find back some of those elements. Um, now uh, we start with the, uh, let's say, with the next generation buildings, the Seattle Library. Um, the Seattle Library was the first library uh, that got built. Um, and the interesting thing is that it was not a design competition as usual. It was a competition where uh, the architects were invited to basically just explain uh, their position on libraries. There was no design. It was uh, basically an application interview. Um, how would you do this? And we said, okay, what we would do, we would first visit all the most recent libraries that are built in the US uh, and study them and think, then discuss with you what is good and what is not good. And then we basically built a brief. Um, there were some sketches then coming out of that discussion. Uh, and you can see clearly some of those uh, elements that you can maybe recognize from the TGB, where there's kind of floor stacks and elements carved out, but also this idea of the library becoming uh, a symbol. Um, so there was also at the time Seattle. Seattle in the 90s is uh, Nirvana, is Starbucks, is Microsoft, is Boeing. So it's technology, but it's also a very democratic leftish city, very liberal. Um, so there was also this idea, okay, we need to do something with technology. Should we still build in the middle of Seattle a library? Um, our position there was like, it started with books. In the years after, a lot of media was added from chips to cassettes to CDs to whatever else, but it doesn't mean that they have replaced books. It just have become more diversified. The same thing for the for the library itself. The library once was just a place to rent books, but it's no longer just that. Especially in this case in Seattle, uh, it's a, a so-called Carnegie Library, and the Carnegie Library was uh, sponsored by Mr. Carnegie in the uh, 19th century, um, and it was not meant for people to be educated per se. It was more for poor people to find a shelter. As they would have a shelter, maybe they would be interested in starting to read and study and educate themselves. So the whole concepts of Carnegie libraries in the US still today is that everybody who goes in there is welcome. And that can be the, the homeless people, the bums that stay all day in the library. They're not kicked out. They don't need to read the book. It is really a kind of shelter for the city. 
and that makes them quite different than from the kind of more traditional libraries that we know. So it's a very, it is a very uh, social project actually. Um, so when we looked at, uh, I think, 10 libraries that were built in the 90s in, uh, in Seattle, uh, we found that there's one thing in common and that's their attitude towards flexibility. And flexibility is usually then translated into, we make a building in which anything is possible. So whatever is bookshelf could become office, could become public space, because we simply don't know what the future is going to do. And that means that there is now a certain allowance for public space, yet uh, that will gradually decline and be, re be replaced with other programs. So that is the flexibility, that additional books for the sake of uh, less public space, for instance. Um, our approach was different and said we let's look then much more specific at what a library needs, what program is flexible, and what is the type of flexibility that uh, a library needs? So we developed therefore more the notion of we have stable program and we have unstable program. Together with the clients, we looked at their brief. This was their brief. Every color is a certain type of program. And when you add it up, it's a mess. And, and, and well, they also could uh, agree to that uh, conclusion. Um, so by then reshuffling the program, we defined what part of the program could be considered stable and what type of flexibility that stable program would need. And therefore also what part of the program would actually be unstable uh, and let's say could not and basically needs maximum flexibility. So we divided the program into those two parts. We have the, let's say the stable boxes. Those are the kind of black boxes. They are dedicated for one program and one program only. And then we have the unstable program. Those are those images here. And those are, uh, let's say they have a theme, uh, but they can basically change every year their content. It doesn't matter. But at least we have the sequence of public oriented spaces in the building that will stay like that. At least that is the plan. So translated that uh, program bar into uh, a section. And then we got this. So we have the stable program parking well, you can't really change that. Staff, meeting, spiral, that those are the bookshelves, and the offices in the headquarter. And in between, the, let's say, dedicated public spaces, a space dedicated to kids, a living room, that's the social function, mixing chamber, which is, let's say, a program they didn't ask for, but we thought it is relevant, and a reading room. And together, it basically would form this, uh, this section. Um, the difference boxes for the different program also have different uh, uh, restrictions, how big a floor plate could be, daylight, no daylight, etc. Uh, and we have shifted them to, to, to let's say, be oriented to certain uh, uh, viewpoints. And what you then get is this. Uh, again, very clearly those boxes with the stable program and then the more organic uh, fluent spaces that tie them all together. Um, and then the total result is, is, is this shape. So in a way you can read bits of TGB, which means there is this rigid flexibility as a box. However, it's defined for each of those boxes differently. And in a way you can read you show because there is this topography, this landscape, this route that brings people from the streets all the way to the top and creating these kind of different moments. So it, it I think it's, it's actually the kind of uh, symbiotic, uh, yeah, uh, combination of the two uh, concepts. So this is then the uh, uh, Seattle Library uh, in the evening, where you can very clearly read the different uh, types of spaces inside. During the day, it looks very different. During the day, it is some, it's a building that basically fits in the CBD perfectly. This is the CBD. These are all the office towers with all the boring curtain wall facades. Uh, and it tries to kind of fit in. Um, but with all the articulations, you get kind of many interesting moments uh, when you pass around the building. Um, structurally, um, the interesting thing is that the kind of shifted boxes, uh, obviously they're difficult to build, uh, but there is also a, uh, a function for it. Um, 
the basically there is a, a core and columns for the typical uh, uh, vertical loads, but all the facades, all these facets are all triangles. And obviously, you know, triangles are very stable. So all the lateral forces, because it's in a seismic zone, are taken by the facade. So in that sense, the facade does have a function. And that means that the uh, combination of this, this diamond grid on these surfaces together creates the stability for the building in case of earthquake. Uh, and then you get these kind of bizarre moments uh, in all directions. Um, I will now take you a little bit through the uh, library uh, from the lower levels. This is the entrance that is kind of hidden behind uh, the facade. We have the kids library at, at the base. So that's one of the kind of open uh, spaces, very playful. It's topography. Um, and from there, there is a auditorium that connects you through one of the boxes to the second uh, open space. Um, this is that auditorium, and basically that means it's now passing through this box. And this is one of those boxes. It's just one big logistical machine. It's basically one big robot where all the books from 36 libraries in Seattle are distributed, repaired, fixed, and then further, uh, let's say, brought to their final destination. So this obviously has a different uh, function, different flexibility than, than, than many of the other uh, programs. On top of that box, and basically coming up from the kids library here, is then the living room. And the living room is the kind of main public space. People enter here through the, uh, through the main door. Uh, either they come up from the escalator, and then they end up here in this living room. And that's a space where you don't need to do anything. If you just try to escape from the rain in Seattle, which is very common, uh, you can sit here, you can drink your Starbucks coffee because there's also Starbucks. Um, and uh, then we have books there as almost as a decoration. These are the, the popular books, the new books. People can go there, read, sit, uh, sleep. Uh, and this is that kind of Carnegie idea. This is a, a public space for, for, for everybody. Um, so different conditions. We have those benches. We designed these benches with this kind of very thick PVC layer spray on. So that's easy to wipe off when those homeless people are sitting there and uh, it's all kind of uh, idiot proof. Uh, so that's, uh, it's very robust, uh, the whole building. Um, then we, we brought in this, uh, the landscape features to, to make that connection between inside and outside uh, very uh, uh, evident. Um, from here, from the living room, you can basically go to the next level. Uh, that is the yeah, that's 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 here, um, and that's the trading floor. Uh, while you do that, you you pass through this box. This is the assembly rooms. That's where you have all the convening rooms, the meeting rooms, the educational rooms uh, in the project. So you can either pass through or go there. Well, we will just go there. We will take the staircase up, and this is the space that that looks like this kind of almost Anish Kapoorish uh, womb. Uh, it's uh, very organic, very soft. Uh, kids like to play there. Um, and from there, you then have views back into the library. And um, when you then get up, you come to the trading floor. And the trading floor is that program that they had not considered. But in the kind of discussions with the clients, uh, it came up that uh, the librarians that they have in the library, their main duty is to tell people where to find the book. And uh, that is because there is this very complicated system or uh, that uh, how the books are organized. It's uh, from 000 to 999, uh, but there is no logic in which part or which uh, type of book is in what system. So librarians basically have to usually bring people to find their books because those numbers over time get distributed over all floors in a very unlogical sequence. So what we have here is, is the trading floor, and that's the place where the librarians, because we try to liberate them from that function, work and where they are here to assist people to really search something. So it's not about finding books, but it's about searching, Googling, uh, trying to kind of put together all media on one central place. Uh, so they become more, let's say, assistants in research than people to basically tell you where the book is. 
Uh, so we, we, we made this very kind of compact floor. I mean, our, our image was that of kind of digital trading floor. Um, and uh, I mean, yeah, that's, that's basically how it looks. So this is really the kind of the Google, the search floor uh, where, uh, yeah, where you can get all the assistance that you need to do further research because that goes beyond Googling, of course. From there, people can then go up with this escalator and then find their book. As I mentioned, the system, the numeric system that they use in, 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 in the Carnegie libraries is, is rational because it's from 00, 00 to 999, but biology can be 890, computer science can be uh, 891, and uh, uh, car industry can be 892 or something. So you really have to know where to go. Once you have the system, let's say, uh, you know how to maneuver and navigate through it. So what we did is we, we, we designed this not as a series of floor slabs, because what happens if suddenly one of those uh, uh, teams becomes very popular, they expand. And what you need to do is you put one on another floor where there is space, and then you break up the logic. And that is what basically happens in uh, the typical libraries. So we designed this as a car spiral. It's one continuous spiral, and we allowed sufficient space to, uh, for future growth. Uh, so that we could always basically uh, uh, expand the collection within a certain area without uh, completely destroying the logic. So uh, you can see how it kind of falls down because it's, it's a spiral. Uh, and now we have these kind of rubber mats on the floor, so 330, 340, and if a collection expands, we can simply put the rubber carpet to the next one so that it always is able to uh, kind of, yeah, to, to, to react to the local expansion or contraction. So you can see the section also on the other sides because it's this kind of continuous spiral. It's, it's very gentle. It's uh, also, uh, of course, following all the guidelines for uh, uh, designing for people in wheelchairs, etc. And when you come out of the spiral, you get to the top of the box and that's the reading room and that's the kind of room where you can do the kind of the silent studying and the silent reading very different from the living room which should be very lively and and uh, uh, loud and uh, you find these kind of pockets with study carols and above that is the headquarter that is hovering above it the headquarter is a single floor uh, with all the offices and that's connected uh, Oh, sorry, no, I go too fast. It's connected uh, through a void that connects the top level to the uh, living uh, living room floor. Um, so that's that's Seattle, um, and from Seattle we then go to uh, Qatar. Um, so Seattle was finished in 2004, opened in 2004. Uh, Doha only got completed uh, recently, but it, the design was already designed in the uh, around 2010, uh, I believe. Uh, and Qatar is a very different condition, obviously. Uh, Qatar is, uh, uh, it's a, uh, a desert town, obviously. Um, it's not a very dense city. Uh, yes, the CBD, but this is part of the education campus. And the education campus, uh, was uh, is an initiative by the Sheikha to uh, collect a lot of good faculties from universities around the world uh, and to promote education in the Middle East. Um, in the center of that uh, is the, the National Library and the headquarter, and we also designed that third building, uh, which is for uh, an institute. Um, but in the center is the uh, library, and it was initially supposed to be a university library, but um, there is also no national library in Qatar. I mean, basically there is no culture of libraries in Qatar. Um, so as we were designing this project as a university library, it gradually got promoted uh, and it became the national library. And in the end, we have three libraries in one. Um, the other thing with uh, Qatar is Qatar is hot. And what do people do in Qatar? Uh, they go to shopping malls. And that's where basically social life is, is, is yeah. you go to the conditioned spaces and you consume uh, because there's not much else you can do, it's too hot. Um, this project is the 
antidote to that. This is a condition space uh, where you do not have to buy anything. And uh, so in a way, uh, it is also a way to, to trigger people to get in here and to get excited about studying, researching, reading, uh, and so on. A little bit like the Carnegie Library at the time, but now transported to a kind of new condition in the Middle East. So the whole notion was we have to make a very generous and inviting living room for the people in Qatar, but for the Qataris, as well as for the expats, as well as for the, uh, let's say, the, 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 the people that uh, work there under, let's say, worse conditions. Um, so a, a democratic space for a not so democratic uh, country. Um, so the book was important and different than from the TGB and also different from Seattle, where the book was not playing a role anymore as the kind of primary means of, let's say, uh, education and research. Here it was about basically celebrating the book and taking the book as the kind of main object uh, for the project, actually for, for the building. So what we did is we, we, we basically, as a piece of paper, folded uh, three tips up and created a room filled with books, basically a topography, a landscape. Um, so it's about this, this floor plane, uh, three uh, 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 tiers, uh, and, and on those tiers we have the libraries. We have the university library on one end and the public library on these other two tips, and because it's folded up, we also have two ways of entering uh, the building. Right in the center, is the heritage library that was the third library that was added during the design process that is a library for uh, antique books manuscripts uh, let's say islamic uh, 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 yeah, antique books basically uh, and on top of that basically connecting the three tiers is the bridge and the bridge is is is, is including all the amenities that the library needs study spaces meeting spaces event spaces uh, spaces that, let's say, uh, are necessary for all the different uh, uh, libraries that are included in this single building. Um, and that's basically uh, the uh, axonometry. Um, so the section, um, two tips are lifted up. One tip is basically filled with back program, a kids library uh, offices, and then there is a big basement containing a lot of uh, back of house uh, functions. Um, so this is the uh, the library seen from the same direction. And you see it's a very transparent building, very, let's say, uncommon uh, in, the, in the Middle East because we wanted to bring in a lot of daylight and wanted to make this feel like a very generous and uh, lively, uh, lively space. And then these, let's say, folds up, they are then allowing access into the building. Um, here you see the glass, and the glass is the corrugated glass we also used in, in Porto. Um, but this time we had to add a lot of coatings to it to also make it uh, protective for the sun. In the end, I think it's still uh, feeling like a very lively, very bright uh, space. Um, the entrance uh, to the library is, is then from below. Basically, that's here, and this is a covered plaza where people kind of uh, stand in the shade, drink a coffee, uh, wait outside, and from there you enter directly in the middle of the building, right in the center. So this is how you enter, and the whole idea is, I'll try it here. So, so basically, you enter here. The whole idea is that the moment you step through the door, you are really immediately in the in the kind of central point of the of the building and you immediately understand where to go to how to navigate the center of the space actually is this uh, triangular uh, square oh okay is this triangular square here uh, and that is the the let's say the uh, uh, area where people can also just stay relax sit enjoy chat uh, or play uh, play a board game. Um, and from here you are surrounded by books. 
it's all books. The, the, the shelves are integrated in the in the floors in the architecture. Um, so these are the shelves, and then it's kind of one kind of yeah, super overwhelming uh, experience, together with the daylight that is that is coming in. So this is uh, seen then from the tier looking down to the center and integrated because this is the uh, university library integrated we have also working spaces research spaces uh, because this university library obviously kind of well, goes into depth uh, that's where you need uh, to really find uh, all you need you need to get the, the right books the right assistance uh, and uh, that is what we have on on, on that side um, but when you fold up the tips, um, there is also one uh, problem that, that immediately is introduced, how to get people there. Um, stacking floors is much easier because you can use an elevator or, or escalator, but in this case, that is uh, more difficult. So what we did is we, uh, we basically talked with a roller coaster company and developed a kind of uh, elevator that can basically go around the whole building like like well roller coaster but it's not go making no loop um so it's kind of object like this um also the books uh in the floor the entire floor a uh, book system is integrated so books can be distributed staff does not need to carry them up they can basically be brought by the, 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 the machinery, which is integrated in the floor slab to each and every terrace. So books are brought back here and then they are automatically brought back to the right uh, location. So every book rack has this integrated elevator system. And from there, they are distributed in the uh, shelves again. Um, so those are the tiers, uh, university library, public library, public space, and then in the center we have this uh, heritage library. And the heritage library is, is an excavation from the library, like you have those, those Roman excavations uh, also existing in the, in the deserts. So this is from the top, and you see all these, these, these little rooms, and in the center you have uh, uh, an, an exhibition uh, uh, lane uh, where these old manuscripts are also exhibited and made accessible to the public. And from the main space, you can kind of look down into it. But there is also, uh, an, uh, let's say, an independent entrance for the Heritage Library so they can act independently. So that's this exhibition lane. Uh, and in between, we have these kind of very narrow passages to avoid that too much daylight is coming down because a lot of these books are fragile. Uh, however, uh, the amount of daylight is is fine. It's, it's good enough. Except for the very special books, we have then some uh, some rooms uh, away from it that can be also operated independently. And uh, that's where we have the very old manuscripts. There's also a, a, a laboratory, a research institute that are digitalizing all these books and also are repairing uh, all those books. Then the last element is the bridge. And the bridge is uh, the only element that connects the three tiers on a higher level. And it allows people then to basically uh, circulate, but it also provides these these meeting spaces, these study spaces where people can work together in groups, uh, can talk, but where also events are being held. So that's the that's the bridge, and you can see. Wait, uh, there's exhibition spaces, there are working spaces, and you also see these kind of big 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 trusses. And those big trusses basically divide the bridge in these different uh, zones, but they are also structural. So it's fully supported by these Vierendeel trusses that are uh, connected to those uh, large columns in the space. And this is how they, let's say, work inside uh, the bridge. And one part is also an auditorium space that can be completely enclosed with a curtain. You can see it from the outside, it's white. Uh, it can be used as a, as a way to access the balcony, of course. Uh, there's lectures, but there's also 
classical music uh, concerts uh, nowadays. And um, yeah, that's then the library uh, from the evening. Again, it's one of the kind of few really transparent buildings in this whole area that is dominated by very kind of opaque and, 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 and solid uh, looking buildings. Um, so from uh, Doha, we go to Caen and, and I put this picture here because I mean, they seem to have many things uh, in common, uh, but uh, actually it's, it's a very, very different building. I think where Doha is still much more topography of books, i.e. more this idea of, of Yushe, continuation of the outdoor space, uh, social space. Uh, this is much more a, let's say, uh, descendant of the TGB. Um, it's, a, it's a mediatek also. Uh, Caen is a sleepy town in the Normandie. Um, it's always quite an effort to get there because you have to kind of get jump trains and there's no airport and anything. Um, but there is this historical town here, which is quite sweet. And then you have this uh, expansion, and this is from 10 years ago. By now, this is all uh, built with new institutes. And our site was basically here, next to the water, with a nice view actually to the historical city. Um, the program was, like TGB, to make four instead of five different libraries, each with their own symbolic uh, architecture, and connect them. Um, and for the same reasons as with TGB, uh, we thought it was smarter to integrate them into a single building and to sh make, share the flexibility, but also to create one, uh, let's say, symbol instead of four different symbols. So there was this uh, idea of making a cross. Each of those uh, uh, ends represents one library, but together they kind of mark a kind of new epicenter in the in the city. And then in the center of that cross, we carve out one space. So it's an elevated space, it's a double height space, it's a void, um, and that is the main public space uh, for the library, the central space for, for, for all the uh, uh, public functions, basically. Um, the location and the orientation is, 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 is uh, based on the uh, main monuments, the two abbeys, a, a man and a women's abbey, and there's also two new developments, and, and we, when we kind of link them, uh, you get this, this cross-section. Um, and you can see here the, the, the abbey for the men and the building. So those heads are oriented, but also that uh, void is oriented towards uh, those four directions. So for instance, from inside, you can clearly see the abbey uh, as part of the skyline. Um, the building is, is not very big. Uh, I think it's only uh, 14,000 square meters. Um, the basement is where 90% of all the books are. This is a library, as I said, like TGB, where it's not about the books. The presence of the books is more symbolic than uh, functional. Uh, most of the books are stored in compact shelving in the basement uh, because this is also has a regional function. It should kind of store all the books from the this, this area in the, in the Normandy. Um, then the ground floor is a very public open space with many entrances, restaurants, exhibition space, uh, magazines, um, auditorium, um, and in the center you have the escalators leading to the first floor. And the first floor is then this living room, which is the void, which you can see here. People arrive right here at the center, and from there, you can then navigate to one of those four uh, different libraries. It's double height space. Uh, so it allows also for adding some mezzanines uh, in, let's say, at the ends. Um, and then on top of that, we have one, let's say, back of house floor, uh, mainly uh, office space. Um, so it's, it's all about uh, the void, uh, the living room. So when you, well, this is a kind of panoramic shot, but it, it, this kind of shows the openness of that space because it's it, the width is limited. It's only 22 meters. It's extremely generous in terms of daylight. Um, and you arrive here with the escalator and then all of the four 
kind of libraries because they are independent with their own main librarian. I mean, that's all very political. They all have their main desk here, so you can always choose to go to the science or to the literature, to, uh, whatever department you're interested in. And from there, you, basically, they are king in their own corner. Uh, so this is what you get when you go to the literature uh, library. So these books are then literature, and then at the end you have this uh, moment with those steps that are specific and only dedicated to the, uh, let's say, users of the liter literally library. And this is then when looking back from that same space to the center. Um, so each of those uh, four libraries has its own special moments. Uh, that's the kind of symbolic moments that they were uh, uh, requesting. Um, so the science and technique has these kind of uh, spaces at the back. This is this uh, curiosity wall. Um, there is this uh, multimedia uh, moments. Uh, and there was this auditorium uh, that I already showed you before. Um, as I said, they, the, the books are symbolic uh, and, and the need for flexibility is very high here. This is really more a living room uh, and, and therefore all the bookshelves are on wheels so we can really move them around, create different layouts uh, depending on, well, say the needs, the appetites. So we, we used standard shelves, the cheapest on the market and, and, and the only thing we could afford are four wheels and a bit of acrylic. Uh, to, let's say, reduce the ugliness of, uh, of those standard shelves. Um, the other thing is that uh, it's a media tech and uh, how, so we, we combine different media, books, but not only books, um, but what is the way how you then get access to those books which are in the basement? And instead of just putting computers everywhere and then you kind of Google, we let's say develop the idea that there is also something interesting about visually looking for uh, the type of book that you want. So first you usually have an idea, this is the corner I'm interested in, this is the, the kind of subject within literature, and then instead of going flipping through the, the covers of the book, um, you can digitally flip through the covers of the books only within these departments. So in other words, we have dedicated iPads that are installed as a book inside the shelf. And from there, you can then uh, request a book that is being brought up. So it's basically, uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of really a combination between physical and, uh, and, and digital. Um, then the construction of the project. Uh, I think there was this very interesting uh, statement in the um, uh, project description that uh, the uh, the main mass, the volume, allows a certain freedom to design incredible shapes because a void is something you don't need to build. Well, the opposite is true. I mean, ma making a void is probably harder than making a building because the void that we have is uh, about oh sorry, is about uh, 80 80 meters span, and a real void does not have columns. So in other words, uh, the structure above uh, is this huge uh, uh, structure with uh, out of steel with all those trusses, which, which spans like a bridge 80 meters uh, in two directions. But the whole space is, uh, is column free. Um, and you, you can see it here, the truss on the top and then the space in the middle uh, liberated from uh, any vertical uh, objects. So this was when they were installing uh, the bridge decks. And um, the other important element, if you don't have columns, uh, then you also don't want to have any structural members for the facade. Because if you put all those steel members or even glass mullions behind the facade, you still kill the transparency. So instead of making uh, mullions for the glass, we designed the glass sheets in such a way that they uh, do not, that they can, let's say, pick up the loads, the, the, the wind loads. And we did that by making basically three-dimensional glass. So there's two sheets, the inner is flat and the outer is, is kind of shaped in such a way that uh, it, uh, let's say, allows, to, well, can handle all the wind forces. So there is no, there's only connections, uh, horizontal, top and bottom, 
and uh, vertically there's only silicon joints and they span six meters um, and they're incredibly expensive so uh, th this is an, an image from inside and the nice thing is that from the inside you barely recognize it because it's it's really quite transparent there is a sudden uh, distortion of the view as if you're behind a kind of a veil but then in the other direction it's extremely three-dimensional and you almost read it uh, as as being a, a kind of a solid material so this is the view from outside and uh, zoom in um, and that makes it in the evening extremely uh, transparent uh, the the living room so it really kind of reads as a, as a void um, this is uh, the evening situation but during the day because the, the building is 100% glass, the, the appearance of the void, of course, changes. Um, so that was that was Caen. Uh, that was the, the, the most recent library, uh, which completed uh, four years ago, five years ago. Um, then the, let's say, the current library that we are working on, it's this one. And this is something that has not, not been presented anywhere uh, publicly. Even the client hasn't seen it. Um, we are in a schematic design phase uh, of a project that has been going, let's say, up and down. We 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 did this. We started this project in in January. Uh, the concept phase is not even approved. We finished the schematic design, and they are already building it. I mean, that's the kind of reality uh, at the moment in uh, working in China. Um, it's a uh, yeah, Chengdu Future City Library. Uh, there is a whole story to it. I will explain you a little bit because without it, you cannot really understand. Uh, but we were invited for a competition a year ago, like GMP, and uh, it was for this area, which is an area out of, outside of Chengdu. Chengdu is a is a, is, a, is, a, is a big city. This is Chengdu, yeah. Um, but uh, this is more beautiful. So this is the authentic landscape around it. However, in the kind of urban expansion plans of the uh, local government, this will all be urbanized. And well, that's a fact. So um, in our project, just to make it very short, it's about this L shape. Uh, and and what, what we try to do is to create an, let's say, alternative to the traditional Chinese system, which is about grids and uh, a podium tower. I mean, that's the only, uh, let's say, uh, master plan that exists in China, basically. And to create a master plan that is really inspired by the landscape. It's not a preservation, because that's with two and a half million square meters, it's impossible. It's inspired by the landscape. And we try to preserve, however, the green and the blue water systems. And by doing so, we were able to it's a introduce a series of different clusters, let's say villages almost, dedicated to a program, but always mixed use. Uh, and each of them has a different urban uh, urban design. Uh, and they are linked and together this forms, uh, let's say for us, uh, interesting alternative to what is being built today. So we can keep the current topography in the project. That was our proposal. To make a long story short, we didn't win the whole proposal. We won together with GMP. GMP is building their proposal or whatever is left of it, uh, of, of the big plan. And we, 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 we got, let's say, a, a, a portion of it. So this was all nice. We were selected, but we could start from scratch. Um, I will just go through this quickly. Uh, these were some of the images. These were the labs, for instance. Uh, and this was the uh, area around the station, the TOD, and that is what GOP is now currently designing. I just want to show them our proposal. But maybe that's also still interesting. Uh, so this was the TOD. That's that's basically the development on and around the train station, the most valuable square meters usually. Um, and our project was basically hovering uh, above it. Um, so they said very nice, but you can now do an education campus in an area you didn't design before uh, and you get half the fee um, so so we did um, so we started new uh, with an education campus uh, university area um, again this is the site and our ambition remains the same we want to 
preserve or let's say preserve as much as possible of the topography uh, basically make a master plan that is inspired by it um, so this is then the the gmp master plan that will be developed uh, around it in parallel to ours we have connections this is the the, the station area and there is an aviation institute so there is a very important uh, access uh, leading through our sites um, this is the topography there's one highest point which is well a hill and then there's these lower ridges around the perimeter and then there's this valley and this valley coincides then with this axis and to make a long story short this is what you get um, so we, we have developed these plots to, to, to form a new topography, combination of educational facilities, residential offices, uh, and so on. And they have started now the excavation of the first part. Uh, it should be ready by uh, October next year, I believe. Um, however, we are still uh, working on, 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 on this part, which is the library part. And the only thing we, we, we knew is it has to be an education campus. They don't know the operator yet. Um, it should be the kind of center of the educational facilities around the area. And it should be or include the library. And um, basically, this is how it looks today. And, and, and in the last five months, the project has going from 25,000 to 125,000 uh, from uh, only library to offices to uh, laboratories. And then they were taken out again back and forth. So anyway, this is kind of uh, the design uh, process, how, how it goes. Um, so that means for us also that when designing a library in this context, we really have to rely on intuition and on, well, uh, experience. Um, a very intense collaboration with the client, analyzing the brief discussions about flexibility is useless, basically from day one. So you need to have a, a concept that is flexible enough to absorb all these changes, while the, let's say, the, 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 the bigger let's say, idea, vision, remains intact. Um, so this is what we ended up with. We we need to make two landmarks. Landmark is something that uh, if they if every competition should be a landmark. If they invite an international architect, so you cannot make an invisible building. We wanted to make an invisible building. Well, that was not good enough. So we have to make two landmarks. So this is a landmark, and that's a landmark, and all the rest we hide in the hill. That was basically our our plan, and then. Whether the landmark changes program or size, well, we stretch it and we model it, uh, but that, that's, that's, the, that's the plan, that's the principle. Um, so this is a, a diagram from, from this week. So today, uh, this is the program, and these are the square meters. And um, so we have on the one end the kind of most, the public component of the library, so the kind of, the, the, the kind of uh, most visible exposed parts and then we have this innovation cluster which is on the other side and everything else is is is, is integrated in the hill so what we needed to add in the hill is 40,000 square meters apart from the two landmarks and we then designed or we composed a kind of program distribution where we included a student center which includes facilities for the students in the whole area public facilities for their own uh, 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 their own foundations, uh, sport clubs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, there is a connector which basically allows this diagonal X to pass through the hill, and therefore also provides access to all the functions inside the hill. Uh, and then there is the canyon, and the canyon is the flexible program that can be classrooms, it can be reading spaces, it can be offices. We don't know. Um, anyway, it's in the hill, and we have a canyon. And the canyon lets daylight in, but obviously it also uh, allows for kind of a, a very kind of intimate uh, relation uh, with, uh, with, uh, with a hill. Um, and when you put this all together, this is basically an X-ray, then you get all these different circulations and programs uh, like this. Um, yeah, it's, it's, let's say, uh, quite a complicated project to explain. I'll just have a reduced version so we have the the hill the plateau and the gem the plateau is the library that's what you see here and what you can clearly see is that how the 
basically the books form part of the topography of the hill um, and are oriented uh, to, to the park. This is the uh, entrance to the corridor and then this is this innovation hub uh, that is linked uh, through the canyon uh, which is running through the hill. So this is the connector and passing through and in the center you suddenly get this, this, this junction with the canyon and on either side of the canyon you have these flexible spaces um, and that this is then walking through. So the, the ground floor of this space has then uh, auditoriums, the larger gathering spaces, uh, which again are kind of linked to two drop-offs on either side. Um, and then there's a few spaces inside the hill that are the special moments and that connect a different uh, program. Um, inside the flexible spaces, in order to provide enough daylight, we have these, these light wells. So these are all, let's say, moments basically inspired by, by kind of the elements you can find in the local uh, topography and the local uh, nature. Um, and then the, the, let's say, the, the most public part is, is this. Um, so we have this, this, these bookshelves that step down the hill that are viewing towards the park. And then above it, we have this plateau, which uh, contains all the kind of, uh, let's say, sensitive and, let's say, special libraries that need their own access and their own operations. Um, but this is the section. Uh, so basically, there's three zones. There is this kind of welcoming area with all the flows and connections. Then there is the uh, area where you always have the open space and always the amenities behind it. So you have the bookshelves with the daylight, and you have the study spaces and the compact shelves behind it. And then you have the uh, floors with the uh, precious and special uh, items. So, uh, well, this is too complicated. Um, this is then the uh, arrival floor where, because it has multiple level entrances, they are combined here, the uh, uh, entrance, foyer, cafe, uh, book uh, return system. Um, and then this is uh, the shelves uh, on the hill from where you can basically oversee the park. Um, and above it, you have then the third floor, which contains then the uh, special uh, library facilities that are also having a connection to some of the program inside the hill. And, and that's, that's this. And uh, with this final image, uh, I'm coming to the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Chris has kindly agreed to take some questions, so if there are any questions, um, please come forward. How am I going to get to? Sorry. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I found the library about the Doha. In the Doha, they have some corners flying on the in the air. Uh, your company did also uh, a project in Peking. The name is Tencent Headquarters in Peking. Uh, some corners flying also in the air. Do the both projects uh, have some connections? Thank you. Uh, the, well, it, it, the 10 cents, I don't know if we have uh, internet uh, connection here, but uh, I don't have an image. Uh, uh, oh, now I sit down. But uh, if you look at purely at the form, yes. I mean, the 10 cents uh, headquarter is a, a headquarter building with floor plates of 180 by 180 meters. So it's very extremely deep floor plates. And then we also have folded up uh, the tips um, that is, I think, the kind of main uh, relation between the two buildings. And also where we fold the tips, we have there the special areas for the, uh, for the special program. However, Doha is one big space. It's really an empty space. Uh, the Tencent uh, Library, uh, Tencent Headquarter is filled with floors. It's extremely dense and we only have small patios. Uh, that uh, that allow daylight in. So the experience inside is 
is the opposite. Basically, you never experience that that shape that you reach from the outside inside. Um, so it was, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's obvious similarities if you look from the outside, uh, but uh, I think that's that's the only thing I can say. Aber hältst du? <laughs> ich will das um, First, thank you. So, so I liked it very much that that actually all libraries are, really, let's say, not different, but they they all give a lot of, let's say, ideas. Um, but from the last two examples, Doha and this one in France, uh, you always uh, worked really with this very big ballet void where everything is surrounded. And, and that is also what we saw in OD, that, that the new, the, let's say the new generation of libraries really have this huge marketplace. And, and we always discuss how does it, how does, the function will be in the next year. So th there were a lot of questions about security. So we learned in, in in Helsinki, actually, they had no security at all. So everybody could come without checking in. They actually took their books they want, and if they want, they, they, they can check it out. But actually, they were not controlled at all which makes this generosity even much more stronger. But we know that the Scandinavian are much more, let's say, locker. Na na oh, sorry. <laughs> naive, maybe, also. Na naive. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and since these libraries are everywhere in, 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 in the Arabic country, in, in France, and, and even in, in the States, so maybe I think it's for us also important to know how how this generosity and security comes together. Right. Um, well, a simple answer, uh, they all have security and they all have their uh, security uh, in front of the door. Uh, in Seattle, um, well, basically there's two, two public ways, the, the, the kids and the living room, and they have their own kind of security gates like you, like you have in, in a shop. Yeah, um, uh, and in car also we have integrated them in the uh, airlock in the vestibule, uh, so they are yeah almost fully integrated with the architecture. So you don't really see it. However, there the advantage of car is that we also have uh, basically all the books that you get, you get them in the living room, and then you take one escalator down. So also that is a very kind of uh, controlled area, uh, how you can let's say make sure that people don't get big things out or, you know, suddenly arrive with too many books because there is also a desk downstairs. But um, no, but we have that in 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 all of the libraries. Uh, so uh, yeah, but you you know you can integrate it quite easily. Uh, I mean they just have their little magnet strip inside the book and uh, that's it. But the, the, the car, well, I didn't tell everything, obviously, um, but the car library is, is also Mediatek. And the whole uh, idea really was there to create a civic place where people can meet. And it's not so much about the books, but it's also for the uh, local entrepreneurs to kind of meet, to have uh, courses, to have... Uh, 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 um, uh, lectures and 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 uh, music events. Uh, so it should be really. I mean, it's it, that elevated living room is really in order to 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 uh, seduce people uh, to enter. Um, so th the book part there is not so important. Um, it's really just to 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 try to stimulate all these other levels of interaction and communication uh, in one central space. And um, yeah, so that lens is really much more this kind of mega tech or, or, or media tech. It doesn't have maker spaces, for instance, but uh, uh, 
yeah, they, they really try to uh, make it very inclusive for the whole local economy and, and all the, well, initiatives that are there. So the, the, the director there is somebody who's really involved in all the, let's say, is a big networking guy, uh, and much less focused on the books. His, his background is not that one of, let's say, the typical traditional librarian. He's more a curator in that sense. Is there a bit, has there been a moment in your design process for the Chengdu library where you considered not to move the whole hill away and replace it by your building? Just creating a new hill? Uh, because it's environmentally or by the costs? Um, well, I mean, I mean, I mean the, client. The, 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 the point, of course, is at some point that there is no hill anymore. Because uh, we, 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 we started uh, in that sense with two buildings leaning on the hill and then connecting. And then we had, a, uh, let's say, a sunken patio with laboratories in the middle of the park that were connected. Um, but then they started to change and to change and to change. The thing is that once you have a, a not or an approval from a party secretary or a mayor or somebody who has seen it, then you cannot step back. At some point, we eliminated the library, uh, the volume of the library, and and and, and made it completely different. Uh, but then they were just pointing at an old rendering and say, no, no, but you know, the mayor has seen this, and and it, it, you have to bring this back. So uh, th that's the, the situation is that you 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 can end up in this deadlock where you are forced to continue with something that no longer makes sense. And, uh, but yeah, that's that's that is that is a risk. What we did in the meantime, we made the hill much taller. For instance, we doubled the height. Otherwise, there would have been no hill anymore. And yeah, in that sense, we we still have some hill left. But again, it's also not preservation. Huh? It's it's not. We don't try to preserve the hill in itself because with so many square meters, uh, that that is impossible. Then you should not build at all. What we try to do is to show something that you know can still lead to different let's say types of mainly master planning because the the the, the whole china is using the same blueprint for master planning and i think in china there is the moment where uh, it's all quantity and car driven it's all based on car and i think by now also in china there is the the the, the moment where uh, alternatives to say this blueprint, uh, quality instead of quantity, uh, start to really become, uh, let's say, yeah, on the radar of, 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 of the policymakers. So I'm optimistic that uh, probably in China, the most interesting developments of master planning will happen in the coming years. There's another question uh, from Berlin, uh, whether you could say something more about the program of the libraries. You mentioned uh, already some of it, our, but are there any uh, other programs in it um, that that are um, that are not common to libraries before? Um, uh, it could be very detailed, but. Um, well, Seattle, in a way, not. It's the central library of the city. And that means that it acts as the, the central space where all the books from all the 36 other branches come together. That's their prime function. Um, and the living room function is also embedded in all their, their libraries. The auditorium and so on, I mean, that's that's also kind of, let's say, relatively typical. Uh, Qatar, well, there's three libraries. Um, and uh, so, but still, that is very much library-related program. Uh, the auditorium is something that kind of turned out to be successful and to be now be programmed for completely different things that it wasn't, let's say, thought for. Uh, so it's every, I, but I understood every week or every second week there is a, there is a concert. Uh, so there it becomes kind of a bit broader than purely uh, book-driven. But then again, it's also more a social space than than a library space. Uh, Caen has um, already four different libraries, uh, each with their own, let's say, chiefs that all battle for their own, 
uh, their little thing. I mean, uh, designing libraries is an extremely political thing because librarians are extremely conservative and uh, you always have to, let's say, navigate between all these, uh, uh, let's say, interests. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, they, they, they do have a much bigger, let's say, uh, interest group than purely readers or uh, in, in subject that, that like, like literature and so on. Yes, they have them, they have exhibitions. Uh, about these topics, about culture, but they also very much trying to to involve the local economy, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, etc. But I mean, other than that, no, it's primarily library. Yeah. There's one here, and then let one last question. Well, actually, I've got two questions. One thing, yeah, at the beginning you were mentioning kind of. Um, you're looking back on all the libraries that you've designed in the past years. What did the first question, what did pop up for you was was new, or astonishing or what do you say? Well, this we have done that time. Is that kind of uh, a good, a convenient building for this time or what what did pop up for you or uh, that was new or surprising in preparing this lecture? And the second question is more a kind of a technical question of Doha. Uh, this is a real uh, a, a big roof that is covered and that there is no daylight in there and the ceiling was very clean inside and maybe you could say something uh, about the the lightning of the room and how did you achieve that the uh, okay um, that there is uh, if, uh, enough light for the okay yeah yeah um first question first uh, indeed i mean we don't have standard lectures on this so it's always about uh, trying to, uh, well, the interesting thing is you always start to reflect on things that are made in the office. Uh, and, and as I said, I mean, I didn't work on all the projects. So especially TGB and you show, uh, yes, you know them. But I had never tried to look for, let's say, familiar relationships so much. Um, so I, I think just the fact that uh, uh, TGB and you share are more or less opposites in many ways, but that in many of the projects you can really find a direct link either to one of them or sometimes like Seattle in both. I think what was kind of interesting because it was not very obvious for me that there were these these notions and I don't think that's also very in the design process never very explicit or direct of oh, let's do a TGP version or let's let's use there are no let's say typologies on the shelf that we say mm, okay competition let's take a b or c today uh, that's that's not how it works but but still i mean these are libraries but as the comment before from 10 cents i mean these uh, so certain concepts either volumetric or, or whatever i mean do travel through different projects through different moments of time and that is always kind of the interesting part where you do some kind of Freudian uh, self-analysis almost on on, uh, uh, on on the work in the office, which which is good because it obviously also helps to uh, say in, in, in the next project to look back at it. And I have not reflected on Chengdu so much simply because um, we're still in the middle of it. Um, but uh, obviously uh, the, the, the tears that we've that we have in, in in Doha are obviously very familiar to uh, uh, to us uh, while we design Chengdu. Uh, the second question um, is: There a faster way to go through? Oh no, I'm here. Uh, the the roof. Well, the roof is not opaque. Uh, the roof has uh, slots in it, and that those slots uh, have uh, bring daylight in, and I think they're about two meters wide. Um, at the same time. You can see them here. Uh, the roof uh, contains all the air uh, extraction and also the smoke uh, will all, uh, so in case of fire, they will open and smoke will kind of go out. So they are here for multiple reasons, but they do uh, bring in a lot of daylight uh, at moments of the day. And then the ceiling itself is reflective uh, aluminum panels uh, in order to really let's say, bring in as much daylight as we can. Um, yeah, I don't have a good image in this selection that shows this very well. Uh, no, they're always hidden in the... Okay. 
Yeah. One last question here. Hi, thank you for the lecture. I wanted to ask if within this family of libraries you observed like what it didn't work and if you learn with those things that didn't work the way you imagine or you wanted and if you kind of try to in the last projects uh, solve and uh, I also have another question what is your if you do have one what is your favorite uh, uh, library <laughs> okay well um Let's say I was, we just had a discussion also earlier about that, about let's say looking at all projects. Um, I did happen to plan a visit to Caen for next, in two weeks, um, to meet the, 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 the director and basically hear what, what his experience has been uh, in, the, in the past period. So we didn't have a lot of contact in the past three years. Mm. Things simply kind of went all its own direction, but it is always good to, uh, especially in moments that you don't need to, that there is not a problem, to kind of meet and follow up and just have uh, spent the day uh, together and 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 see, uh, yeah, what are also the problems and what can we do? I mean, sometimes it's a little, let's say, design issue that we can solve. Sometimes there are things we can't solve; uh, they go beyond uh, the design. Uh, but it is always extremely interesting to, uh, let's say, follow up. We did do, I think, um, 2009 probably, a magazine uh, called Post Occupancy, where also on Seattle, we analyzed what happened after the opening. What were the, let's say, how was the building used, uh, intended and not intended, and what were also the bigger effects on the surroundings, on the city, after it, it opened. And, uh, so, yeah, but it, it's not that it's very systematic. It's not that we have, let's say, a calendar every year of visits to each of the buildings that were finished, um, but um, still, yeah, extremely interesting to, to follow up. Um, and, and eventually also be the kind of the uh, responsible for making changes, rather you do it yourself and that somebody else uh, tries to fix an issue uh, in a way that is obviously uh less good um well your last question is about kill your darlings i mean uh, that's uh i know there is no favorite uh really um i think they're all too unique uh, 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 working on them if you just look at them at the presentation you may i uh, might this image is nicer or that is more radical but the project like Caen which is a kind of a public project with a very precise brief where every room, you know, is budget is fixed. Uh, you cannot really uh, change too much after you have done the competition entry. Uh, and very different from the process from, from Doha uh, and even with Seattle, although it was a public project, they, they wanted to kind of change. In France, they did want to change. Um, so uh, that also means that, that the kind of... Uh, uh, margins to 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 uh yeah within the design is, is is different for each project i mean the budget of doha was obviously a little bit more than the one in Khan, uh, because it was the sheka her own uh let's say personal project and well, the funds are rather unlimited there Thank you very much, Chris. I'm absolutely thrilled that you took the time to put this together for us, especially for this course, and uh, came here to um, and are here tomorrow. And um, before we go through to have a glass of wine, it is your first lecture with a live audience, so I think we should show Chris what it means to be a live audience by putting our hands together. Yep. 